She began piano at age nine, followed by drums, arranging, orchestration, and then composition and conducting. A multifaceted writer and performer, she has been featured in the Orient, Europe, and throughout the United States. Our guest for today, Miss Bonnie Janowski. Welcome to the show, Bonnie. Thank you, Mark. Great to be here. So, Bonnie, at what point in your life did you know that you wanted to be a composer? Composing actually came later because first I uh, started, well, let's see, <laughs> not sure how far we want to go back, but um, when I was nine and my brother was six, my dad said, oh, we're going to give my brother uh, piano lessons. And I had just a few days before been over at a neighbor's who had a piano and I thought, this is interesting, patterns of notes and things like that. And I was taking dance lessons when I was seven and eight. That wasn't my thing. So I started then. And so I was playing piano and it was interesting that I always loved science, reading science articles. So I, I kept thinking I'd go to medicine. But then in um, junior and senior high school, I started to pick up some percussion besides piano. And then I, uh, but a big change came when I decided, grew up in LA, I lived halfway between LACC and West LA College. I thought, oh, West LA's a new school, I'll go there. Amazing uh, music instructor. And I signed up for jazz band and first I was playing the piano parts where all the notes were written out. I didn't know how to read chord symbols or improvise or any of that at that time, or play by ear. And uh, but the more I got into music and then took some music theory classes from Arthur Downer at, at West LA College um, and also discovered this was a, a, I love variety and even before composing I love the fact that uh, as I got more into um, in the jazz band I went over from the uh, piano and I sat down at the drum set and I, I just took to that so immediately I played some as I mentioned, a little bit of percussion in high school. Um, then I, I started getting invited to rehearsals. So I go to big band rehearsals. Somebody invited me to Dixieland jam sessions. I'd be playing in community orchestras. I love the variety. And then after taking uh, a second music theory class with Arthur Danner, I, I switched to a music major. Uh, then I knew that was what I wanted to do. Um, and also writing my first writing in the um, musical, um, in the music theory class, we had an assignment just to write a song and I, I just wrote a little jazz song, but uh, Arthur Danner said, oh, arrange it for the band. You've been around the band. That just came naturally to me. I have no trouble doing the transpositions and all arranging. I've always been told I have a really good ear for, for any arranging classes or any arranging I've done or in college, any arranging classes, orchestration, they all said, yeah, you really have a knack for that. And it wasn't, you know, I, I did composing here and there. I wrote up some thing, originals for my own big band and uh, things like that. But I didn't really get seriously into composing, like for film, TV, or musical theater, I'm very, very much into now. I really um, entered that world as well. And that was more when I was in my 40s. So I didn't... Do you, uh, you said you, you had thought you were perhaps going to pursue a career in science. Mm -hmm. Are there any skills that you learned when you were interested in science that are applicable to your career as a musician? Do you see any correlation between <laughs> those two professions? Question. Well, I do see a, uh, a uh, tie in between both. I know many musicians who are uh, scientists, um, doctors, uh, they're very, both very mathematical. They're both patterns. They're both, um, I love numbers. <laughs> I know a husband and wife who are both doctors and they met in uh, music school, but then they both went to med school instead. But, um, and then um, now my uh, boyfriend that I met 13 years ago, the reason I mentioned him is because he is an electronic engineer. He's retired now, but he uh, loves music. But before we met, I mean, now I've taken him to big band or you know, readings of musicals or screenings of films I scored, all kinds of things that he in the past had not been to. And um, yeah, he always, yeah, we talk about the, the, I mean, he loves 
music and I love science. So and he reads very uh, a lot of very um, complex articles on nanotechnology, neuroscience, electronics. So, um, but I'll just mention that we met at a chamber music party at someone's home. It takes place every year. And uh, they have a lot of chamber music constantly at this home. The people at this party, other than myself and maybe two, three, four others, there's a retired and a current LA Phil player that usually come. Most of these people are physicists and engineers, mathematicians. A lot of them are computer scientists. Um, they're, they, but these people play great. They could be musicians. In fact, there's a fellow there that he is an engineer at JPL and his wife is a, a biologist at JPL. And he had to make a choice many years ago. He won an audition for the New York Phil on bassoon. And then he decided to go into science. But there's there's so much overlap. I know a lot of friends of mine that considered um, either people in music, actor friends of mine, that uh, had to, at some point, they made a choice, or some have done both, or, or done music when they retired, or various um, combinations. But there's a really, there's something about it. There's a really, um, Maybe kind of the mindset, especially now, because so much software is involved. Like you're familiar with logic software, so you know there's a lot of, um, I guess, um, uh, like left brain thinking. That's not the word I'm looking for, but um, analytical thinking. There's a lot of analytical thinking. Um, when it comes and to I music? puzzles, for instance, and and um, in a way, well, mostly I do some performing but mostly i do composing still do orchestration arranging sometimes i'll still for people i know do music copying or or transcriptions which is writing down exactly what you hear which that's an art to it but um yeah very uh i love puzzles and, and kind of c composing and i mean it's kind of in a way puzzles or i mean doctors have to you know hear some uh, um symptoms and then quickly determine and with music, um, yeah, it, it's kind of like puzzles, putting all the pieces together. Who or, or what was it that inspired you to take up composition and to actually pursue a career in music? Um, well, a lot had to do with uh, Arthur Danner and the uh, West LA College. That was to really realize that in music, there were many uh, opportunities. Uh, of course, there's studio work, there's but um, it, it was, I, I really enjoyed the, the diversity of playing the different styles for a while I was playing a lot of Dixieland on drums. And when I, by the way, when I did switch to playing uh, in the big band, decided when I was 20, by the time I was 25, I would have my own big band, which I did. This was an all female sorry, band, correct? Sorry, what was that? Your band was an all-female big band. The first big band it was, when I was considering starting the band, I wasn't sure whether to do all women or not. Then I met a woman named Roz Crone, who had played in some of the bands uh, of the 1940s, like the Sweethearts of Rhythm. And she came up to me at a, was playing this big band somewhere. Um, and so the first big band I had was a, co-led, we called it Bonnie Janowski, Roz Crone Big Band, and it was all women, and then for a while I was on my own, and then there was a woman, Ann Patterson, who had started uh, a, a band. Uh, there was a, a woman, Ann Patterson, who had a lot of experience in big bands. I mean, I was like 25 years old at the time. I didn't have the experience leading my own band at that time. So I brought her on as a co-leader and that's the band that became Maiden Voyage, the all women big band. And then we had different directions that we um, kind of wanted to take the band. And uh, so then I left that band. Then every once in a while I'd put a band together, but then I tended to do a co-ed band thinking, oh, I didn't want to just have a novelty. Um, it's always interesting to me that at the Musicians Union, and I've been on the board of the Musicians Union for many years, and uh, of course, uh, when it's not COVID, there are rehearsal rooms, and there are a lot of big bands that rehearse. A lot of guys that'll come to town will 
that's how they first meet a lot of uh, people playing the bands. And I always thought years later there'd be a lot more women. It's still, there are some very fine women musicians, um, but still predominantly men, at least in the jazz bands. 